now after introducing you to various magnetic interactions i am back to magnetic neutron diffraction in many ways magnetic neutron diffraction is similar to x ray diffraction let me start at the onset that often we do these experiments using powder crystals powders means powder a powder consists of small crystallites oriented in all possible directions and the magnetic neutron diffraction has an additional advantage that x rays can give us structure physical structure or chemical structure but magnetic neutron diffraction in addition gives us magnetic lattice actually possibly this is the only technique with which magnetic crystallographic structures like ferromagnetism or anti ferromagnetic structures have been determined i will come to specific examples later so magnetic scattering amplitude first the magnetic diffraction is due to the potential vm if you remember earlier when i was talking about nuclear scattering i talked about vn which was a delta function and the nuclear potential this is due to the unfilled orbitals and the magnetic moment which is there and due to unfilled shells that interacting with the applied magnetic field h on the sample so it has two parts actually this mu n is the magnetic moment of the neutron and it has got two parts as i wrote here spin and orbital i'll just give you the expressions because derivations will be out of scope at the moment so ultimately i can define a uh, magnetic scattering length when i say scattering length i must tell you that sigma of any scattering scattering cross section is given by 4 pi into a scattering length square so this b can be nuclear or b can be magnetic there i think i wrote as a magnetic a magnetic so i can define a scattering length associated with the magnetic scattering is given here which is actually in terms of centimeter to the minus of the order of 10 to the minus 12 cm uh, this is the mu n of the neutron and mu b is a bohr magneton this value you can see that uh, 10 to the minus 12 centimeters. So if I do 4 pi a square, then it comes to about 10 to the minus 24, which is a one barn and square of this value. And this is our in our experiment. Earlier I told you that I was looking at the Fourier transform of the nuclear density. Now I am looking at the Fourier transform. of the unpaired electron spin density together with the fourier transform of the nuclear density so i get both of them when i do neutron diffraction for a magnetic sample while discussing monochromators i used this expression and i told you that uh, if i do a vector diagram k is the momentum transfer and mu is the direction of the magnetic field then the i can define a vector q which is basically the component of mu k sub mu dot k so component of mu along k subtracted out from mu and this is q if this magnetic moment is in plane or if the k vector is normal to the magnetic moment in the sample then this angle become zero this angle becomes 90 degree and in that case your q is equal to minus mu because mu dot k is zero and magnitude of q square is equal to 1 so this expression has got two components which i gave you earlier it has got a nuclear component and a magnetic component weighted by q square often q square is equal to 1 because 
the direction of the magnetic moment or the magnetic field is normal to the k vector or the magnetic momentum transfer. But most importantly, when I talk about these components, Fn square is a square of the scattering amplitude which I gave you earlier. If you remember, I wrote down in case of nuclear scattering, this V was delta R minus Rj sum over J which was a nuclear potential. So this was e to the power i q dot rj bj sum over j. This uh, the derivation was given by me for nuclear potentials present at the lattice sites. Now with that I also have an fm term fm square and fm square you can see apart from other term there is one f term. What is this F? Actually, this is the magnetic form factor. Now, in case of uh, nuclear potential, the form factor is replaced by Bj. And I told you earlier also that Bj, if I consider this in Q space, it's a continuous constant value. If I consider Q versus plot of Bj, it's a constant value for all Q. Whereas in this case, in the second case, I have got magnetic form factor that means this is due to the unpaired electrons in the shells. Let's say it is a 3D electron in case of nickel, cobalt, iron, the D group, the D electron magnets which are known to us or 4F electrons in case of uh, rare earth materials. So that means in this case, in these cases, my spin is in a shell which is either 3D or 4F and it's a shell. Now the Fourier transfer of this shell, unlike Bj which is constant for all Q, this will tend to fall. This we discussed earlier when he talked about extra diffraction because in itself extra diffraction which is due to the atomic charge cloud if you take a Fourier transform that also falls but the difference between these two is that here I consider the entire atomic charge cloud at a lattice site here I am considering only the shell which contains the unpaired electrons so this shell is in general larger average value of the R will be larger and so it will be falling faster with respect to Q values in case of magnetic materials. So this is here and as I said if the sample is magnetized normal to the scattering mu dot K is 0 and Q is equal to minus mu and amplitude is a unit vector and Q square is equal to 1. So now before I go forward, there are two more terms e to the power minus 2 w, w. If you remember that we talked about Debye Waller factors, this is the Debye Waller factor because uh, when I consider a crystallography structure, whether magnetic or nuclear, the entire electronic cloud and the whole object at a lattice site undergoing oscillations. So this is the thermal oscillation and I showed you earlier that uh, dw is basically q square and average value of r square. So this was e to the power minus 2w is e to the power minus q square and average value of this oscillation amplitude. So this gives us the thermal factor. So this thermal factor again at any Q it will reduce the intensity and we can also evaluate from the reduced intensity what is the value of this. So in case of X-rays it can be taken but this also part forms a part of the 
intensity. So now the scattering for a magnetic crystal as I told you it has got two parts the nuclear part and the magnetic part and the nuclear part is given by uh, again I repeat that delta Q minus tau because for Bragg diffraction I discussed with you the evolved construction and this tau is equal to a reciprocal lattice vector so every time a diffraction appears diffraction peak appears then k minus k prime which is q should be equal to a reciprocal lattice vector there i wrote g excuse my expression here it is tau it is a reciprocal lattice vector and for the magnetic part all this remaining same there is a prefactor and this structure factor and form factor for the magnetic part which we have to accommodate so neutron diffraction for magnetic material as i showed you in this expression in this expression if the neutron beam is unpolarized then this uh, this part will average out to zero and intensity for an unpolarized beam will be fn square plus q square fm square q square equal to one means fm square plus fn square so in case of unpolarized neutrons also we have got two parts in the intensity one is due to the nuclear part and one is due to the magnetic part so we can determine the magnetic structure by fitting such an uh, such a pattern so really speaking to find out magnetic structure in solids we need not polarize the neutron beam because one might think that since uh, i am talking about spin switcher aligned then i should also have a dressed or curtailed neutron beam where i take only one spin with respect to the spin which is there in the lattice but it is not necessary unpolarized beam as you can see from this expression i have got a nuclear part and also i have got a magnetic part and both can be fitted or taken out from a measured intensity only thing is that the magnetic part has this structure factor or form factor and of course i discussed with you already the q vector need not repeat that and this is q the, so if the neutron beam is unpolarized basically the neutron beam polarization under for an aligned sample is basically a sum of i plus that means neutron beam and the magnetic spin they are parallel or neutron beam and the magnetic spin they are un, anti parallel so it is half of that uh, average of that i plus and i minus gives the unpolarized intensity which is nuclear scattering amplitude square and magnetic scattering amplitude square so we can find out the magnetic structure by fitting the intensity from both the sides so neutron beam is unpolarized of course there are instances where we use polarized neutron beam but in general for powder neutron diffraction for magnetic structure we don't need to polarize the neutron beam the polarization unpolarized beam here the interaction between nuclear and magnetic part the two fn dot fm part p dot q part that gets averaged out i'll just show the expression in this expression fm fn p dot q this averages out to zero for an unpolarized beam and we do have addition of this intensities separately coming from the magnetic part and the nuclear part uh, I, let me just show you how well this can be done all over the world possibly neutron magnetic diffraction is one of the major activities in the research reactors so but i show you the two instruments which are available at baba atomic research center which have been used extensively by 
my colleagues. So both of them are based on position sensitive detectors. The one instrument which is run by solid state physics division of Baba Atomic Research Center. The Q range is typically around you can say 0.5 to 10 angstrom inverse. We do need a resolution to resolve peaks which are close by. This instrument has got a resolution of around 0.8 percent. The other one is run by UGC DA CSR which is an UGC center at Baba Atomic Research Center that runs this instrument which is a, again a powder diffractometer uh, with using position sensitive detector. The Q range are marginally different but has got slightly better resolving capability of nearby peaks because delta D by D which dictates the nearby peak uh, is slightly better 0.3 percent and we can you can see that the from the Q max values quantum mechanics allows us to study crystallographic structure because delta R dictates the value of this the distances the, or the, the order of distances that we can measure using these instruments. So I will discuss some pattern with some specific specific properties. Let me just bring to you a diffraction pattern of lanthanum calcium manganese oxide. Now two things. Please note that this pattern has been taken at 15 Kelvin and 300 Kelvin. So this is a high temperature, room temperature pattern. This is a low temperature pattern. The crystallographic peaks which are possible are listed out here. Not that all of them you can see but many of them you can see here. I just refer to because this is a fundamental reflection in a ferromagnet. So in a ferromagnet means the crystallographic structure a ferromagnet is where a crystallographic structure I am just taking a very simple square lattice and the magnetic structures are same. They have the same repeatability. Same repeatability. So in this case that means that means here I will find crystallographic peaks and the magnetic peaks coinciding. But please note that at 300 K you have this crystallographic peak which is also having magnetic, magnetic contribution nearly very small. As we go to low temperature the magnetization of the sample improves and then the magnetic density increases and you can see it from the rise in the peak intensity and this is a Bragg diffraction peak, crystallographic peak but with the addition it is 0 to 2 peak and 2 to 0 they are degenerate peaks but with the addition of the magnetic intensity you can see the, from 300k to 15k the intensity has increased. So this increase is due to increase in the magnetic intensity. Reason being for a magnetic material if I consider the moment versus temperature it, it undergoes a second order phase. That means as you go to lower and lower temperature the moment increases with lower temperature and that is what is indicative of the pattern here taken at 15k and 300k. Another interesting thing I want you to note that the magnetic peaks they come at low values of Q. This is being due to the fact that there is a magnetic form factor working as a multiplicative unit with respect to the Bragg peak intensity. So things added to this is if your Bragg peak is a delta function then there is instrumental resolution which has been added on to this 
then convoluted with this, then there is a background which is added on to this, plus this magnetic form factor also one needs to take care of. And that's why the magnetic peaks in magnetic neutron diffraction appear at relatively lower angles compared to the high angle peaks. And high angle peaks we are not find, we will not find much of magnetic intensity. No. Now I'll come to the actually the refinement technique we use for magnetic structures. Uh, in this regard, I must tell you that we had a course done in uh, uh, 2020 21 on uh, neutrons con for condensed matter, which has been recorded and kept on site. And regarding magnetic neutron diffraction, Professor S. M. Yusuf. Yusuf and Professor Anil Jain, Anil Jain, they did a detailed description of the technique and especially tutorials taken by Professor Anil Jain on fitting of magnetic structure using Reedwell fitting program. Because this is a detailed program and it needs a uh, uh, large number of tutorials in this case i am just i request you in case some of you are keen so lecture in this course on neutrons for condensed matter lecture 13 to 21 it deals with magnetic neutron diffraction and there are a large number of tutorials anyone of you interested to learn this technique in greater details for your samples I will request you to use this. These lectures are available in YouTube. YouTube under HBNI. HBNI and also can be downloaded from HBNI homepage. HBNI homepage. Here in this course, I will briefly introduce you to the full proof or the fitting refinement techniques for magnetic neutron diffraction.